Hi everyone, my name is Mark Hansen from 10th Magnitude. I'm a cloud solution architect and uh, I'm here today to talk to you a little about uh, consumer identity and Azure B2C. So let's jump right in and um, I'd really like to start off by talking about some of the challenges that this space tends to bring to folks who are developing applications around it. Um, you know, the solution exists mainly to help support um, uh, some of the applications and bringing consumer identities and partner identities into an application that may not have that. And it's a service that obviously can be integrated uh, right into the applications and uh, you get a lot of different features that come along with it. But the challenges that uh, it's really starting to uh, address are around user experience, scale, uh, the data that's contained around these user identities, uh, speed, performance, and costs are obviously part of that. Uh, the integrations that come from these applications or the identity services held within and obviously security. You can't talk about identity without addressing security. So um, looking at some of these pieces, uh, you know, you look at the user experience is really about personalizing towards your consumers. Uh, consumers today with the mobile experience and everything around that want to have something that they can trust and that they can use very quickly. If it doesn't have that, um, they're probably going to move on and find something different. Um, the scale is important. Uh, scale of your enterprise consumers is definitely something different than your external consumers. Um, so do you have a service that's going to be able to scale with this application that's going to support that? Um, volume of users, billions of users, uh, versus the velocity of authentications. You know, maybe you're dealing with a ha uh, hundreds of authentications a day on your enterprise, but you could be dealing with thousands or tens of thousands or potentially hundreds of thousands of authentications per day with your consumer space. Um, the data is important, personas, uh, the different patterns and analytics you have around that, um, and uh, how do you manage the quantity of uh, consumers in this space as well. Speed, performance, and costs. Like I said, uh, consumers want speed. They want that mo mobility. Uh, they want to handle it for peaks. Maybe you're building a consumer application that's around retail and the holidays. Um, so it's important to have something that can handle that speed, that can handle that performance of what you have um, and, and, and that how you're addressing your applications there. Um, the cost to develop it is also part of it. Are you, are you building something that is heavy and hard to uh, develop in your applications? Well, this is kind of a cost to operate, cost to develop aspect of a service to, build, to address this versus building your own. Uh, lastly, some of the integrations and security, um, you know, integrating with social identity providers, integrating with some of the SSO capabilities, uh, integrating with some sort of repository to store your uh, identity information, different security protocols, um, different APIs, multi-factor authentication, ability to audit, monitor, and report, all uh, challenges in this space as well that you have in your enterprise identity stores. So to me, I think you, uh, you end up with three options uh, to address these challenges. You either build your own, which many people have done for a long time, um, and along with that comes the heavy cost and the heavy development time and trying to integrate all these capabilities into that build your own model. Uh, you can leverage existing systems. A lot of times you take in the consumer identities and you port that into your enterprise identity store and try to leverage some of the uh, enterprise capabilities with consumers. Um, obviously the challenge there is will you pay for consumer identities with a lot of your enterprise cost models uh, or enterprise uh, capabilities. Uh, that brings different type of challenges but maybe it gives you some of the options uh, that, that you need. Lastly, you look to a purpose-built uh, consumer identity solution like Azure uh, Active Directory B2C. I think that that is really where a lot of folks are going in this space. Uh, that's a lot of what we support and a lot of what we uh, put in place for our customers. Um, so with that comes along a handful of different uh, criteria and a lot of different capabilities. Um, so why would we look towards this third-party solution? Um, really, it's around the, the, the different uh, policies and integrated options that come with leveraging the service. So you look more around integrating your application to the service and leveraging the service for a handful of different options versus building it into your application. Um, so that's the heart of what uh, Azure Active Directory B2C gives you. Uh, it gives these policies that you can start to marry up uh, a lot of different options towards the application and built towards the app. Uh, there's a lot of different integrated identity providers, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Microsoft. Um, you know, those, those are there for you to leverage as part of the identities and bring that along to give you that social aspect. 
Also the user attributes. So uh, you can customize and build on top of that different user attributes that allow you to store information uh, about, about the user. So to me, it, it really builds out this comprehensive solution. We've talked about some of these already. I can leverage social identities. I can integrate with Azure Active Directory natively. So that's really neat because now it becomes more of an application focused versus more just the consumer. I can now bring my enterprise identities and my consumer identities all in one and leverage that for authentication uh, to my applications. Local account registration obviously is a requirement. That's where most people are coming today. Um, but the bottom part here gives you a lot of these capabilities. Self-service password reset, self-registration, uh, different authentication standards that you can build towards. Um, scalability we talked about. MFA and single sign-on, which we'll show here today too. So to me, the policy framework here, uh, just briefly touching on this too, is, is really where the, the heart of this uh, service comes in. Uh, so you can bring these identity providers, you can bring these different applications, uh, and you can bring the user attributes together. And that's where, that's where the, the magic happens with this policy mapping. And you can tailor that towards the different applications that you have and how you will put them together. So uh, you can customize and personalize for application A versus application B, C, and so on. Um, and you can have different sign up, sign in, different attributes, as uh, well as different editing uh, opportunities within there. So in the end, it ends up kind of looking like this. Uh, you have this B2C service at the heart. You have these applications coming from the side. You have these different social identity providers that you're leveraging and connecting to to provide authentication. And at the top end here, uh, now you're able to bring in some of your ide uh, enterprise identity providers also into that space, a lot like the social providers on the bottom. Um, so whether you're leveraging your on-prem uh, uh, Active Directory and syncing that to the cloud, or you're leveraging another partner, um, Azure AD, you can start to bring those in as part of the B2C uh, service and leverage that as part of your uh, application authentication. So this is what we'll kind of show off today in, a, in the demo here I have. And, and lastly, before we do get to the demo, there's some pros and cons. Um, and, and some of these cons I have highlighted because they're kind of becoming less of an issue now with the Azure AD part. So the pros, I think we've talked through most of this, uh, a lot of external capability out of the box, um, minimal operational involvement to build that uh, service. The page and look can be customized. You can deal with re a password resets. You don't have to build your own. And you get the single sign-on. So some of the uh, cons right now, uh, there, there is yet to, uh, to have a SAML 2.0 out of the box. Um, I think there's options around that. Uh, there's no necessarily SaaS integration, which a lot of them may leverage SAML. Um, and some of the orange ones here that I have highlighted, uh, those I think you can address now by leveraging uh, some of the Azure AD integration. Um, but obviously the last one is you can't add other social providers on your own. So if you wanted to integrate to uh, some of the ones that aren't built into the service right now, there's no option to do that. So let's get over to our, uh, our demo and let's take a look at this service and see, uh, see how this kind of functions. So I'm first going to give a uh, kind of a simple overview within the, within the portal. And uh, it's, it's obviously an a, a Active Directory tenant, Azure Active Directory tenant. However, um, it has its own space. And I'm not going to get into the whole provisioning of the, of the tenant today, but obviously that's a, a well understood process you can find online. Um, but what you do get is, uh, I'm going to overview, is just kind of some of the providers uh, and the applications and the different attributes here. So, um, you know, I've got a few test apps that I've got kind of integrated with this uh, B2C tenant. So there's a process of registering applications to the B2C service. Um, I, I bolted on a handful of different uh, social providers, uh, LinkedIn, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Facebook. Um, and obviously I'm registering local accounts by email. So I probably wouldn't look towards leveraging all of these uh, in, your, in your deployments. I think you know two or three probably is a good number because what happens here is you'll probably have a lot of people start to register accounts. Um, and in my example, I've got, a, I've got a Joe Magnitude account that he's got an account registered with every single one of these. So you tend to get account bloat. You tend to maybe provide confusion to your customers. Um, you want a clear, concise uh, model that you want to provide there for folks. User attributes, there's a lot of user attributes out of the box that will be leveraged. Um, you'll see a few custom ones I have here around uh, favorite color and employee ID. I'm just using those as some examples. So we'll kind of show off how I, how I leverage that. Um, and users and groups, pretty straightforward. So users and groups has the same look and feel of Azure uh, Active Directory. It's, it is a tenant under, underneath there. 
So the difference, however, however, here is within this, the policies. So you start to leverage these policies um, and um, you put them together to handle different sign-on uh, characteristics of the policy. So you'll have different options that you provide. This is where you're really mapping it together and matching uh, the criteria that you want this policy to, to have. So this is a sign-up policy. I've selected a handful of providers. I got different attributes. Uh, I've got different application claims that'll send back to the app. Um, and other different options there too. And right now I have multi-factor turned off for this one, but obviously you can enable multi-factor by policy. And that goes uh, all the way through, through sign in. Uh, there's obviously sign up or sign in policies, which kind of combine the options together. And uh, profile editing, so how you edit the profile uh, of a user and how they handle password resets. So all combined, you look at the policies. I have a handful that I'm leveraging here as part of my example today. So that's kind of the portal, a uh, quick overview of the portal. Let's go and uh, exit out of the uh, PowerPoint here real quick and kind of take a look at what, what I've uh, constructed here within some, uh, within some demo applications that I have. So uh, there's a lot of demo applications that you can go find here that take a look at this and get you started and familiar with uh, Azure Active Directory B2C. I have a handful of them here. This is an app that has a, a web service and an API service here on the right side. And, Within both of those, there's a web.config file, and within that web.config file, I leverage uh, some level of configuration that points to my B2C uh, tenant. So I've got both of those modified uh, to leverage the service here. Um, quickly, uh, I do have them running already, so I'm just going to kind of click over to that so we don't have to wait. Um, but here's my ordering service, that uh, my application that I have up and running. So. I'm just going to walk through some sign up and sign in options here. So let's actually do a sign up. Um, I'm going to leverage my, my own account because I don't have an account in this system right now. So I'm going to click email sign up and I'm going to go in and enter in my 10th magnitude uh, email address. And I'm going to enter a password of some sort. Re-enter that. It does uh, leverage some password complexity rules uh, that are built in, so I'm just going to enter a zip code and I'm going to give my favorite color, let's say it's blue. Uh, let's put my display name as uh, Mark Hansen and uh, I'm going to just put a local in here so we know which one it is. And um, country region, let's uh, say we're in the Bahamas. I like the Bahamas, it sounds like a great place to be. Uh, and uh, I don't know, let's say my city. So let's create that account. And it's going to send a verification code as part of this. So it's going to register this. And I have my email open and it's going to see that I have a verification code. So it's kind of welcoming me to the service and registering me. So I'm going to copy that back over and enter that into the verification. I'm going to verify that. And now I'm going to create. Now I'll click create. And now I'm in. So I have this and you'll see my claim. Uh, yep, there's my color blue because I have that in the claim that's sending it back to me. Here's my uh, email address, uh, the different policy that I'm signing, uh, signing up with. So you get the information back. I'm uh, authenticating to that. I can go in and I can edit my profile. Uh, you know, so I can add some other information in here if I need to, like employee ID, whatever that may be, and I can update that and save on and get back into the application. And then I can sign out. So the next example I'll give here is uh, logging in with an existing account. So I actually have a, uh, a Google account that's already been signed in, uh, signed up on the, on the application I have and in, in the B2C tenant I have. So I'm going to click on Google. Uh, it sends me off to Google so I can log in here. Uh, and I've got this... Uh, lovely uh, Joe 10th magnitude uh, account at gmail.com that I can log in with. So let's log in with him. If I got the password right this time. And you'll see I'm logged in with Joe Magnitude Google. So he's got obviously a different account and logged in with that. He's coming from Google, but yet I still have a lot of the attributes that we talked about before. He's got a favorite color blue as well. Um, and he's here in Chicago. So let me go back to the app. Let's take a look at the claim. And you see here joe at gmail.com. And also you'll see the identity provider coming from google.com. So uh, pretty straightforward. 
Um, the API part of this application was pretty easy too to set up. Uh, it's actually an order list that uh, I have running in the background with a storage emulator. Uh, so that's actually giving that there and it does take a little bit to spin up the storage emulator here. So uh, I'll just give it a quick second and you'll see that it pulls in that. So the API is also running uh, and working off of the same uh, authentication there. So that's bringing that in. So the nice thing is, is I also have a second app. Um, let me pull that one up here really quick and let's uh, kick that one off here. Um, and this one uh, leverages the same uh, identity provider. So it's using the same B2C tenant I have. So it's going to come up and basically launch another application for me. Uh, and this application uh, you'll see is it signs me right in. So I'm getting single sign-on across these uh, applications because it's leveraging the same, the same service. So let me log out here really quick as part of this one because this one's an interesting one because it actually has a different login uh, policy associated with it. So it's a sign in and sign up policy. So now what you'll see is it's combined on the same screen. Um, obviously I'm familiar with these with any of the sites that you go to out there on the internet that's leveraging a service such as this. So you can register and sign in or sign up as part of it on the same, same screen there. So it kind of combines it together. So. Um, we've kind of walked through a handful of things, right? We've talked through the portal, we've uh, reviewed some of the uh, code and the demo applications I have. Uh, we've gone through the user experience of registering and logging in with a social identity. Um, you know, showed the differences between some of the policies here and uh, logged in with some uh, different social accounts. So uh, the one piece that I didn't uh, do a demo of today that we'll save for another day is actually leveraging your enterprise identity provider and bringing that into the same space here. So we'll save that uh, for another time in another video and uh, thanks, thanks very much for joining.